Greetings, beloved. I am Dr. Kenneth Hill, pastor of Shorter Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Franklin, Tennessee. And I am excited to speak to you on the subject when the church is burning. Our scripture is Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. As elder, there was a small church I supervised that burned to the ground. Flames consumed this little church, and people came from all over town. They stood in the streets and watched as the church burned. As I drove up and noticed several people that I thought that I hadn't seen in a while, walking up to one man, I asked, where you been? I haven't seen you around here in a while. The man responded, that's because I've never seen this church on fire. You never have to advertise a fire. When there's a fire, likewise, if your church is on fire, you will not have to advertise it. The community will already know it. The reason so many mainline churches are dying today is because they have neglected the fire of God's Spirit. Say, I'm burning. Today, we are celebrating Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the day that the Holy Spirit showed up. The church really became the church on the day of Pentecost. There was a sudden and strange awareness of supernatural happenings. A sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind filled the house where the disciples were staying, and tongues of fire came to rest on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in languages not previously learned. The crowd heard them speaking and banded together in amazement. A very special moment in God's eternal plan was taking place, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The story describes how the followers of Jesus gathered in Jerusalem when suddenly there came a sound from on high like the rush of a mighty wind. The noise of the rushing wind altered them to the fact and alerted them to the fact that something was about to take place, not of their own doing. It came from heaven. Thus, God brings humanity dead in sin back to life. If Christmas is the feast of God with us and Good Friday is the feast of God for us, then Pentecost is the feast of God in us. The Holy Spirit, like a rushing wind, breathes life back into us. Any time a wind comes from the presence of God, it blows away all hindrances and obstacles. It dries the ground under your feet so you can move ahead. It demolishes the spirit of fear and heaviness that makes you want to quit. The spirit of our church is defined by making sound, so, sounds that turn the world upside down. When it's not right, just, fair, equitable, or kind, a rap group, Public Enemy, says, turn it up, bring the noise. We must bring the noise. We must bring the noise in our neighborhoods when our people are mistreated, ignored, and murdered. We must bring the noise when we are attacked, denied basic rights, and our humanity questioned. We must bring the noise when the powerful hurt the powerless and when those in need are not served. We must walk out of institutions that do not value us. We must create our own institution to serve our people and our communities. Say, I'm burning. When the fire falls, when the day of Pentecost had come, there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributing and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The church was gathered waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit and power. They already had much of what churches have today. They had a place to meet, the upper room. They had people who were committed. 
They had conducted church business meeting. They had elected officers. They had prayed. But what they didn't have the power of yet was the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all ready together. When the Holy Spirit arrived, they were all filled at the same time. Tongues of fire rested on each of them. The text doesn't name names. It doesn't tell us who spoke first or who spoke the longest. It doesn't tell us who prayed harder or what they prayed. What I read is that they were all together. What I know is that the Holy Spirit's coming out party is in a community. There's an expression, there is no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. What a wonderful crowd. Some had come alone, some had come in groups, some had come with family members, some had never been to this city before. No matter all those differences, here they were in Jerusalem. Everybody was invited to the feast. These were everyday people with unusual faith. The fire fell not just on the group, but on the people gathered as individuals. Tongues of fire on each one. Every Christian is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the fire of God. The fire within the Christian is to burn and fight the fire without. It is a divine fire against demonic fire. Everyone is facing one fire or another. Either one is being a channel of the fire of hell, or one is being cleansed and motivated by the fire of heaven. The destiny of every person is determined by which fire they allow to burn in their hearts. Say, I'm burning. The experience of the Apostle Paul, no one knew this better than Paul. He was a Pharisee who was being consumed with blazing bigotry and the flame of rebellion against the church of Christ. When suddenly he met with a flame more fierce than the sun and he was cleansed by the fire of Christ's love. From that time forth, Paul was a flamethrower for Christ. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Don't quench it. Let it burn. Let the fire cleanse you and empower you. Don't resist it. Let it burn. In today's times, we might say, don't be a spiritual fire extinguisher. If the fires of hell run wild, it's because Christians are quenching the superior fires of heaven. The greatest need in the church of Christ today is to catch fire. Mm -hmm. For only the fire of the Spirit can empower us to be victorious over the raging flames of hell that threaten the world and the church. Take away the fire of the sun and earth becomes a giant iceberg. Life cannot survive without fire and warmth it produces. This is the true spiritual life. Yes, take away the fire of the Spirit. And God's people will become God's frozen people. Say, I'm burning. When the Holy Spirit comes with power, we need fire of sufficient power to do more than warm our own hearts and open our own eyes to the truth. We need fire that is contagious and fire that will move us to labors of love and which will cause others to be kindled and become torches of testimony for the glory of God. What will you do? Will you quench the spirit or will you let the fire burn? The church that is our power will go nowhere. The church of Jesus Christ can do many things, but it cannot recreate the power that comes only from heaven. No amount of worship teams can replace the Holy Spirit's power. No evangelism explosion program can replace the Holy Spirit's power. No home fellowship groups can replace the Holy Spirit's power. No Christian education department can replace the Holy Spirit's power. No great facilities can replace the Holy Spirit's power. Say, I'm burning. 
Yes, my brothers and sisters, the church of Jesus Christ is called not to sit still, but to move out, not to pull out, but to reach out. The power we need to grow our churches is not the power of a program, but is the power of Pentecost, the power to witness, a witness that does not come from us. When the fire falls, God comes. When the spirit comes, God shows up. People are more comfortable on their face on the floor than sitting in a pew. When the spirit comes, it empowers us to serve. When the spirit comes, it refreshes our walk with God. When the spirit comes, it strengthens our work. When the spirit comes, it inspires the mind to truth. When the spirit comes, it moves the body to praise. When the spirit comes, it guides our life. When the Spirit comes, it glorifies the church. When the Spirit comes, it fortifies the family. When the Spirit comes, it rectifies the wrong. When the Spirit comes, it purifies the community. When the Spirit comes, it qualifies the children. When the Spirit comes, it beautifies the world. We have to be like those apostles. With the Holy Spirit down on our heads like tons of fire. And the Holy Spirit is a fire lit underneath us to push us out into the world to proclaim the good news to all who need to hear it, to the poor, to the oppressed, and to anyone in pain or sorrow or facing difficulty in this life. We must take them the good news and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen, amen, and amen.